Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing another edition of Weekly Wishlist or Washout. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't seen the series before, what I do is once a week, every Wednesday, go through all of the new beauty releases that I see on Instagram, and I decide if I'm going to be adding anything to my wishlist or if I think everything's a total washout. Before we jump into this week's products, and trust me, there are a lot of products, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like this weekly series, and if you have it and you'd like to, I hope you will consider subscribing so you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday. And also, a bit of a heads up, tomorrow's video, Thursday, will not be going live at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time like usual because I will be doing a live stream. My live stream will be going up at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I recently did a poll on my community tab and the last time I checked it, the majority of people said that they would like to see a live stream on a weekday as opposed to a weekend. So I'm gonna try and do that live stream tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a Get unready with me along with a tag. So I'll be answering some tag questions and showing you how I take off my makeup and do my nighttime skincare. All right, so with that out of the way, let's jump right in. Oh God, there's so much to talk about. Okay, first, a palette that I did already discuss in one of my previous wish list or washouts. This is the Lime Crime Venus 2 XL palette. In the palette, it looks boring. It's really, really boring. But swatched out, especially like this gorgeous, like leafy kind of swatches, I'm partially attracted to these greens. But other than that, I mean, honestly, this looks more like a peachy palette than, than like any other peach themed palette that I've seen before, which is kind of cute. And I know I've been talking about how I do kind of want a peach palette. So so now that I've seen some better swatches of this, I'm I'm a little bit eating crow, but then also I am also very hesitant. So I'm not, I'm still on the fence now about this as opposed to being completely against it. So we'll see. I might have to watch some other videos before I pick this one up. Casey Holmes just came out with a collab with Physicians Formula and they just revealed the entire box. So it's a box that comes with the butter bronzer, blush, and highlighter in different shades. I believe the bronzer is in the shade deep, which that's not a deep shade. Come on. Blush and highlight. I've tried the butter blush and the butter highlights and I really don't like their formula. They don't really stick well to brushes. They don't look good on my skin. So because of that, I'm gonna skip. But just like looking at this packaging, there's a lot of wasted space in this box. Like, I like that you get, like, a lip product and, like, that perfume, because I would love that perfume. I'm sure that scent smells amazing. But look at all the empty space. This would have done better if they had made all of the shadows and the face products into, like, a compact palette and then boxed it together with the other two, not made it all one palette. Because once you take those two products out, you just have... Oh, it's 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 not really that appealing. And the eyeshadow colors that they picked, like I, I'm, I know what they're getting at, that you could also use the bronzer, the blush, and the highlight as eyeshadows as well, but still. Eh. It's gonna be a no. It's gonna be a no. Also, speaking of Casey, I stopped watching her channel because her content kind of got boring and it, it seemed a bit repetitive, but she was one of the first people I watched on YouTube but I was like obsessed with her channel back in the day. But I heard her and her husband are Trump supporters. Now I haven't seen any like actual evidence of this, I've just been on Reddit. But if they are, yeah, I can't support that. I can't. All right, so we got a lot to unpack here. The Morphe Foundation. All right, so 60 shades on paper sounds great, but then people were getting the PR boxes. And if you actually look at all the shades, there aren't a whole lot of deep shades and they all run like really, really or there's like, there's, okay, so in their concealer, there's actually an orange Cheeto shade <laughs> and there are some really red shades. Someone said like one of them could be used as like a color corrector because <laughs> it's so red. Um... So anyway, that being said, at least, you know, they're coming out with 60 shades. But that being said, 60 shades when 40 of them are light medium doesn't mean a whole lot. On to the next point, the actual product. I haven't watched a whole lot of videos on this yet. Like I said, I've just looked at a couple of things on Reddit. 
But so far, it seems like the only people that are trying to give this an okay review are the ones that are affiliated with Morphe. Now, I think it was Nicole Concilio, uh, I will correct myself in editing if it's not, who swatched some of the darker shades on her hand and then they stained to the point where they wouldn't wash off before she did the lighter shades. I mean, I've had some foundation stay on my hand, but if I go in with a makeup wipe, they'll come off. I've never seen a foundation stain. And that's not even like a full day of use with a bunch of products on top of it. No, that's a swatch. That worries me. That's something that I would not want anywhere near my face. Could you imagine having a foundation stain your skin? I, oh, mm. Mm, someone needs to do a deep dive into those ingredients and figure out what the heck is going on there. So I was considering picking this up to actually do a video review on, but after seeing how it's stained and how some of the bigger influencers have had, like, bad experiences with it, even though they're trying to spin it in a nice way because they're affiliates, no. I would not recommend anyone go anywhere near this product. I just, mm. Mm. And it's not even like that affordable. I think it's like $20, $18. Like it's not the, eh, meh. So Fenty is coming out with some more complexion products, which is awesome. So they're coming out with concealers, 50 shades of concealer, and they're coming out with a setting powder. Okay, the packaging for the setting powder, stunning, gorgeous, amazing. I know you don't need to spend money on setting powder because there are so many great options from the drugstore, but I'm curious about the rest of Fenty's complexion line. I personally wasn't able to use the foundation on its own because it was really, really matte. So I loved mixing it with other foundations, but I never really could use it on its own. So I do want to try that concealer, see how that concealer works for me, and I do want to try the powder. So these are going to be on my list. I know they'll be in store at Sephora, so I really want to go in see if i can match myself because <laughs> if you know my channel you know my history with service at sephora so i want to see if i can match myself i i never go into sephora alone anymore <laughs> like i always make sure somebody's with me because i'm ah just mm, 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 mm. okay i'll throw the video up in the cards if you if you want to see what i'm talking about but i do want to actually get matched because with 50 shades that's not something you can do online easily and I'm not going to buy multiple shades because I'm sure it's going to be like a regular high-end concealer price. I've seen a lot of people talking about these new Urban Decay brow products but personally I remember I used to like brow pencils for a bit but I've tried a few brow pens and while I thought they looked okay at the end of the day I really think pomades and pencils work best for my brows. But this still looks like a really nice product. So it's like a double-ended pen. One side is, I guess, a pencil. The other side is a pen. It looks really nice, but this isn't something that I'm going to pick up just because I know what tends to work best in my brows, and I don't think I would get a whole lot of use out of this product. So I'm a bit confused. I've never heard of this before. Okay. So Smashbox, I guess, is doing a collection with The Hood Witch, which seems to be like a, uh, a small... Not small, but like an online store that specializes in uh, crystals. Uh, I'm sorry. Let, let me take a quick look. No, <laughs> no. So I can't even look at their store because currently they're charging you twenty dollars just to become part of the community. Oh, I don't even know what the hell this is. Where's the store? No. I, this is stupid as hell. Anyway, there's some glimmer drops, whatever, pass. <laughs> uh, so who even cares about what Tarte is doing nowadays? Whatever. I like that everyone's already forgotten, like, what Tarte did in the beginning of 2018. I still haven't bought from them. So Ofra is coming out with a new collection with, uh, France, okay, Francesca Tolot, which she looks like a, a makeup artist and an author and, oh, she looks super talented. And this collab 
I'm not quite sure exactly what's in the collab. It looks like there's a palette and a liquid lipstick. So I've never tried any of the Ofra liquid lipsticks, but I do like that it looks like they're coming out with smaller versions of their highlighters because I have had a full-size Ofra highlighter that I got in a BoxyCharm. They're huge. Same issue like with the Jeffree Star ones, like they're gigantic. And while I do want to try out a couple more of them, I think they're just big. And for someone that already owns like a lot of highlighters and I really don't need any more, it would be nicer to try some of these smaller ones out. So I'm going to keep my eyes out to see if maybe any of these smaller highlighter thingies will be released as singles because I would like to pick up one or two of those if I could. So Milani is coming out with a new foundation. They're coming out with the Conceal and Perfect Foundation Stick. Oof. So they're coming out with 20 shades. This is supposed to be full coverage, natural matte finish, weightless formula made with bamboo powder to absorb oil. So I really want to try this out. I doubt they'll be in any stores nearby because my stores never carry anything new. <laughs> but I think I'm going to have some issues with the shade because I was able to get a shade close-ish to me in their regular foundation, but I still have to mix it and finagle it. So I'm not quite sure if I could get a great shade match out of this, but I am going to take a look. They are $9.99 each, so I could pick up one or two of them and see if I can find one that's closest to me. It looks like it's already available online, or it's going to be available, yeah, today online. So I'll take a look and see if I can find whatever one will be closest to me. I think this is such a cute idea. MAC is coming out with a MAC in monochrome collection where they're working, I think, based off of like their famous like lipstick shades and then they're doing a blush and like two eyeshadows and making a kit out of all of those. So they have Ruby Woo, their famous red, Velvet Teddy, which is one of my favorite nudes from MAC. They also do See Sheer, Heroin, Diva, Candy Yum Yum. So I would love to see these in store because like that peach one, I forgot which one. I think it's Sea Sheer. That looks beautiful. And also I think Velvet Teddy would be pretty cute. So I really want to see these in store. I see the picture as a display at like a Mac store. I'm going to see if I can look actually in the store at what they look like, swatch a couple of things. But also I'm not sure how much they are for the kit. So that'll also play a big part. I don't want to pay too much for just... Some singles I probably won't use, a lipstick and a blush. What I'm really into this is for the lipstick and the blush because I think that would make such a cute monochromatic look. Mm. So, Kat Von D is coming out with some shade and light contour duos now. Ugh. I don't even know where to start with Kat Von D now. I don't support her. I haven't purchased anything since the whole vaccination thing. And then after that, I figured... I found out the rest of why she's problematic. I'm using this as actually a plug to talk about my 9pan19 project that I just started where I'm actually trying to finish up her whole contour palette in the year of 2019. So th these are the same shades that are in the new duos that she's coming out with. I wouldn't recommend purchasing anything from Kat Von D at this point, but I am working right now to pan that entire palette just so I can get it out of my collection. So if you missed that intro, I'll throw it up in the cards if you would like to check that out. Get vaccinated. Oof, look at this palette. Moving over to Indie Makeup Spotlight. This is the new Paris Lights palette from Shea J Cosmetics, and it's just bright as hell. Jesus. Yeah, I don't think I'm that interested in it. I feel like it's just like a rainbow palette. It's not really like a color story here. It's just kind of a bunch of brights thrown together. So we finally saw what the inside of the Peanut Butter and Jealous palette looks like. And I gotta say, I'm a bit underwhelmed, but I can see what they're going for. The color story makes sense. Peanut Butter and Jelly. You've got some brown, some purples, and a yellow. I think it's a cute palette, but am I going to pick it up? Most likely not, just because I've got these shades already. So Give Me Glow Cosmetics is coming out with a palette called the Juicy Olive Palette, and I'm loving this aesthetic with the martini glass and the olive. I'm hoping we get some beautiful greens in here. I cannot wait to see what the actual colors are going to be, but it looks like it's slated for an early spring release, so I am going to keep my eyes open for it, but yeah. You get a nice mirror in here. It looks like there's going to be six shades. The shades are called Dry Martini, Cocktails, Shaken, Not Stirred, 
vodka teeny, a dirty martini, and garnish. Like, ah, oh, I want to see what this looks like so bad. This is right up my alley. I love it. What do you guys think of these new Makeup Geek shadows that are coming out? I think some of the colors are really nice. I, I was a bit mm, about the original picture slash video Marlena came out with because she said, like, these are all the swatches. I didn't use any primer, but there's foundation underneath. Now, foundation can be a primer when it comes to actually swatching shadows, especially if you don't set it with a powder and you just do the swatches on top of the foundation. So I'm a bit mm, about that, but I have been wanting to try out Makeup Geek. I've been seeing them in my local Targets, but they come in like little quads and none of the quads are really like meh. So I'm thinking of doing like a create my own palette on Makeup Geek. Let me know if you guys want to see a video about Makeup Geek. I feel like, I don't know, did Makeup Geek run their course on YouTube already. I feel like Marlena is a good thing and a bad thing, is that she's not really keeping up with current trends, and so nothing she's coming out with is really that exciting or that interesting. But I, I still want to try out Makeup Geek, because I've only tried like one or two of their shadows, but I remember back in the day before Morphe, when everyone's holy grail was Makeup Geek, so I still want to try them out at some point, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to go the route of just like creating my own like six pan, 12 pan palette. We'll see. Ooh, so there's a new pastel palette coming from Blush Tribe. The shades do look really pretty, but again, I'm having hesitations when it comes to Blush Tribe. I go in detail about this in the last video that I just came out with, which was nine, uh, blah, 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 which was nine brands that I want to try in 2019. So I'll throw that up in the cards if you do want to catch that as well. All right, and I'm going to leave it at that for this week. I feel like we went through a whole lot of products. Oof. Let me know down below what you thought of these products, what you want to see me work on, what you want to see me pick up, and I cannot wait to see you in my next live stream tomorrow. Remember, it's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Live stream, not a video. Bye, guys.